All right. Well, thanks so much for joining us. If you're watching uh, and it's morning time, good morning. If you're watching in the afternoon, good afternoon. And if it's evening, uh, good evening on behalf of uh, myself, Brandon Middleton, and a special guest, uh, Manaka Sundar here. Uh, we're really excited to have you uh, log into this conversation uh, about boards, about pipeline, about many topics around inclusion, diversity, and equity. So um, yeah, thank you so much for, uh, for joining me, Manaka. If you want to take a couple minutes to just tell the people uh, who you are, where you are, what kind of work you're focused on doing, and then we'll uh, jump into some interesting Q&A here. Sounds good. Thank you, Brendan. First and foremost, I have to say this. I'm a big fan of you. I've been following your videos uh, and it's been amazing what you're doing. I just give big kudos. So keep continuing this great work. And uh, I'm privileged and honored to be a part of this discussion. A little bit about myself. Uh, my name is Menaka Sundar. I um, work at AWS as a solutions architect leader. Uh, you know, as a leadership, as you can see, one of my main focus is building a more diverse team. And it's so much important to me and near and dear to me because as a diverse person myself, uh, who's been in the industry for 18 something years, uh, 18 years ago, when I first started my tech career, I used to be the only women in tech uh, in my groups. And that seems so natural to me at that time when I was in professional services or when I was in product development. It was so normal that me being just the one person among many dudes that's surrounding me. 18 years now, that's just so not normal, right? You just, you ask these, I, I interview a lot of young people and the first question they ask is, how diverse is your team? How many women you have? What's the racial diversity you have? It's just a normal question now. It's so much how we have come as an organization uh, from where we used to be. It is so mind blowing. And this wouldn't have happened if not for amazing people like you all stepping in and doing the right thing and speaking about this more openly. Uh, so I, yeah, I'm very much, uh, you know, touched by all of that. And this is something more important to me as well, because one of the ways that I love to influence is giving back, you know, the things that I learned, the struggles that I went through, and there's a lot of positive things. They are amazing people that gave me their hand, uh, offered me the mentoring and continue to offer me the mentoring and provide me the support. So connecting those people, building that network of connection is super important. And at the same time, me, like 18 years down the road, I'm in a leadership position. I have the ability to mentor and coach people. It's time for me to give back. It's time for me to build that pipeline. Yeah, that's that's beautiful. And to I think it's a human need, actually, to be able to take what you've learned and to try to make it better for the next generation or for the next person that you uh, will see in your shoes. So it's awesome that you even have the heart to do that for the next uh, folks who will be stepping into these next leadership positions in the next generation. So yeah, thank you for uh, that particular intro and for giving us a little bit of background of why you're passionate about this space. Um, a couple more things just to round it out, uh, like where in the world are you right now? Um, give us a sense of kind of where you're at and how you're situated. Yeah, I'm uh, working from the, uh, I live in the Bay Area. I live in the East Bay Area of uh, the, uh, the San Francisco market. And, uh, you know, I'm with my family, with my husband. I have three kids. I have twin boys. Um, and then I have a daughter who is uh, 10 year old, a fifth grader going into middle school. And my twins are just getting into kindergarten. So my hands are full as a mom. <laughs> as you can see. And um, yeah, I mean, we have a pretty, my husband uh, is also pretty occupied in his profession. So pretty hectic, hectic life. But I think we take step backs during the weekends and we put a lot of efforts in raising our children right. And uh, yeah, I based out of Bay Area and I work in the San Francisco office uh, here in the Bay Area. That's awesome. Well, uh, we're just now finding out. I've also got three children. So the uh, I call it the juggle struggle. So you're like always juggling and you're trying to make sure that the kids are taken care of, that your customers are cool, that your team is safe. Um, so I have a lot of respect for uh, working families who are doing it 
during this crazy kind of pandemic time. And, um, you know, we, we realize that there's a bunch of uh, folks who will be watching this who are logging in from uh, places that have been recently hit, like Brazil and, and India. So uh, again, if you're uh, viewing this from a space, uh, just know that we're thinking about you, know that we're uh, praying for you, and uh, we all want to be back to, you know, quote unquote, normal in a healthy state uh, at some point this year or very, very latest. We're hoping for uh, early 2022. So yeah, um, thank you for that. I Maybe we can go back in time a little bit. You mentioned 18 years in the industry. Um, did you, like as a little girl kind of growing up, take us back into time to tell me whether you think that she would recognize you as you kind of operate today? Did you always know you wanted to be in technology? Um, just, just take us back down memory lane and give us a little bit of how you uh, came to present day. Yeah, I mean, you know, you have to be connected to your roots and sometimes very rare questions, we have opportunities to share this. And I'm very honored to do that. Um, so I was born in India to a very conservative family. Um, so my mom, um, my dad, my sister and myself. And uh, in Indian systems, we have a very jointed systems, even though it's, it's, it's a nuclear family. Uh, we are connected with our aunts and uncles and grandparents and uh, every holiday for me, we lived in a city uh, in Madras or Chennai, the recent naming conventions. So we lived in a big city, but my grandparents, they are from a small town. So uh, whenever we had holidays and vacations and Christmas vacations, we always used to go back to our hometown. And all my cousins who also lived in other cities, we all have that as a meeting place. So, and then, you know, as I said, like we have a big family. So we had lots of cousins and I had lots of, uh, you know, niece and nephews. So we all go together and that 10 or 12 days or 15 days that we live together, stay together, we used to have a blast as a family. And uh, I, I mean, I, I've seen my daughter, uh, for her, the cool stuff is being in the internet and playing Roblox and, you know, doing Snapchat. For me, those days, it's all about enjoying the nature, going out with cousins and friends and playing. Um, I just felt how digital this just generation is and being so cool about having a device in hand and just being only dedicated to that. But my childhood was all about, you know, people and surroundings and, you know, grandparents and relatives. And uh, yeah, I mean, I was a studious student. I've always wanted to do something with my career, uh, but I didn't know what it was. So I took a lot of diversions to decide, okay, technology, computer science, you know, and then into management. Uh, it's really where I wanted to land. So it's, it's just an amazing journey. What I learned through this process was just keep dreaming and keep thinking and never lose hopes. I've had so many setbacks. Uh, I've aimed for something I did not get as a child. I've had setbacks again in my middle school or in my high school or the college that I wanted to go. You know, I applied and I got one. So, you know, they would be setbacks in life. But I think every setback for you is just another stepping stone to push yourself a little bit more, push yourself a little bit more, and then continue to keep that end state in mind. You want to accomplish something and keep marching towards that. I think I'm halfway through. I still have more to go, but my philosophy is just keep the end state in mind and keep pushing yourself towards that end state. Yeah, that's that's amazing. I the the two. Amazon leadership principles about like bias for action and, and ownership um, have really had me thinking about failure in like a different way. So uh, as an engineer myself, um, having to get like certifications for work and like all the certification exams that I've failed <laughs> all the times that I've like hit my head against the wall is actually the failures and like the tense points that provide like the best stories and like the best testimonials for you to tell kind of the next generation or other people who are getting ready to try something. Yeah. So I find that uh, anything worth having um, is, is gonna be a little bit difficult. It's gonna be a little bit tense. You might have to pull an all-nighter or two in order to get to 
uh, that state, but in the present, you know, you know, thing that I live in right now, my work, my community, my life, um, honestly, you know, a kid from the South side of Chicago could not have dreamed to be doing what I'm doing and to be able to connect with people who come from uh, all over the world, you know, speaking all different languages and participating in all different cultures. So it's been really a joy and a treat to, um, you know, if you work hard and you keep at it and you are open to opening your mind and opening your heart and your hands, um, this world's got a lot of variety, a lot of cool stuff in its diversity. And uh, hopefully we'll be able to, you know, articulate that to our children and get, get them off of these devices for at least a little while so they can <laughs> uh, look at them and appreciate it. <laughs> that, that would be a challenge. I think we have to find new ways and innovative ways how we are going to integrate that knowledge to them through the devices and through the modern technologies and the gaming stuff that they're all into. Yeah, it's, um, it, it's, for me, it's more like my dad always used to say this, and uh, I was very poor in drawing. Uh, we used to have, you know, uh, activities and curriculums, and what is your activity that you're really good at? And my dad, he really signed up for, you know, arts and crafts, and painting and drawing was one of them. And I was terrible at it. And I used to always complain to my dad, why the hell did you sign me up for this one? Yeah. And he used to say, you know what, I'm just going to teach you. And throughout this, the time that I was registered in, in for my curriculum, I just drew only one picture. Mm -hmm. And I got better and better and better at drawing that. <laughs> and eventually I got better at it. And eventually I got even uh, awarded for that particular picture. But throughout my time, I was only focused on that particular thing. And every time I drew, it just got better. So uh, to me, it's like, you know, things may not be perfect today. Your career may not be perfect today. I mean, you may not have landed in the right job or you may feel that, you know, you're not learning anything in your, in, in your current team, but you know, you continue to iterate on that, right? Little by little, little by little. And that leads to perfection at the end of the day. Yeah, that's, those are gems. And for people who are listening and, and watching, hopefully they're picking them up and putting them in their back pockets so that they can take this uh, stuff we're talking about forward in their own careers and their own day to days. Um, let me let me go backwards in time. Uh, you mentioned being maybe the only um, woman on your first teams. And I also have the experience of uh, um, you know, being a kid from Chicago, moved to the West Coast. Uh, my first company for my career was at Cisco Systems, and I actually landed on a team of software engineers that were, um, you know, mostly um, Southeast Asian, uh, Indian, and Chinese. So initially, I had a lot to do to understand kind of the culture. And I remember like celebrating like Diwali for my first time <laughs> on that team and like uh, understanding a little bit of Indian culture because the school I went to in the neighborhood that I grew up in didn't have um, the, that, that kind of diversity. So give me a sense of um, kind of your take on being the first and only or one of the only kind of in your first couple of jobs, uh, maybe after you got out of school. Yeah, I mean, uh, my first job was uh, for Norfolk Southern. Uh, it's a Southern company in Roanoke. Mm -hmm. And um, it's uh, it's a railroad company, you know, it, it's it's a hundred year old company and uh, people over there, everyone I would I can say or and I was in my early 20s at that point when I got my first job and people around me were like all like, you know, have families, kids, they're all in the middle age and uh, mostly white folks in, in this in the southern and, uh, you know, I was uh, the first one got hired as an engineer uh, in their team. And, uh, you know, I was the only women in the team, uh, to be honest. And um, we had a very small engineering organization. We had corporate IT, but our engineering organization was really small. So they were actually building that organization. So I wonder if I go now, they would be a lot more diverse folks yeah. uh, for sure, right? So um, yeah, it was it was so amazing. I I had an amazing manager, my first manager. Uh, he is uh, he's a white male, but uh, he was very open-minded person. He used to, he never treated me like, hey, you don't have experience. It's This is just your first job, just do your stuff. 
uh, he gave me a voice uh, whenever I had, uh, you know, opinions, he gave me a voice. And he also coached me uh, in a way how I should bring forward my ideas in a meaningful way that doesn't offend others. See, one thing about diversity is to respect others' opinion, right? And we all have different cultures. Uh, for me, growing up as an Indian in, South, in the southern part of the India, we have direct communication. If I want to say something, I just say it direct. Yeah. Uh, in some cultures and religions, uh, that is a little bit offending, right? You just come out very strong or you being a woman and you're very direct in your communication. So you could be tagged in a different way. Yeah. So, you know, you just have to make sure that, you know, know your audience, respect their background, respect their uh, upbringing mm -hmm. and find ways to understand, to communicate uh, your ideas and thoughts. So I learned a lot as a part of being the uh, the one woman. I never felt it at that point that this is an awkward place. But right now, if I were in a team that I was the only woman, I would feel a little awkward. I would feel that what is this company up to, right? Like, but at that at that situation, it just didn't even occur to me. Uh, but I got very well integrated into the system, um, and I leveraged those mentors. My mentors are really my crown jewels, right? They are really the people that molded me. I continue to have lots more mentors. And uh, any a mentor is a person who I can just go have a free conversation. You know, I don't have to worry that, will they think that I'm an idiot? Will they think I'm a stupid? Will, is it something like, am I asking the right question? Is it appropriate? Like, I just wanted to have a conversation because yeah. is it the right thing for me to do? And I, I picked up mentors very earlier on in my career mm -hmm. and I've continued to stay in touch with them. Um, I've tried to, you know, ping them in LinkedIn's every time when they reach their milestones in their career. So they have always been the way that I've looked up to. And I said, OK, I want to be this person. Let me kind of replicate what this person is doing. Right. And kind of like be and sometimes you don't have certain people cannot be your mentors because they don't have the time bandwidth or you don't have a communication channel to them the best way for me to do this is like idealize them mm -hmm. right i i even today in um in amazon uh, i have so many women in leadership position yeah. that i really idealize and to me it's like they may not have the time for me to give me the time to mentor me but i can look at them and i can say okay if I was this person, how would I make decisions? How would I act like them? How would I think like them? How would I behave like them? That gave me the opportunity to kind of like follow them and understand them, understand their qualities and kind of replicate it for myself. Um, so kind of use those uh, privileges as well as the techniques and tips to, to adopt and to grow myself. Uh, well, and then when I got married after my first couple of jobs being in, in the southern part, and I lived in a very small town called Lynchburg, mm -hmm. and uh, I still have my phone number, which is a Lynchburg code phone number. So I never bothered changing it for this many years. And that's, again, another small town. Uh, but, you know, there's a lot of beautiful things that happened there. I used to go and do volunteer work in the University of Lynchburg. I got to know a lot of people i used to go and do some services at the church i got to know many more connections there those connections opened up the door so when i got uh, engaged and i decided to come down to the east coast these connections also paved me a way for me to find a job locally and then when i moved and from there when i took a corporate job in oracle things were a little different even though i was a woman um and you know, I felt like I was a minority as a woman from a gender perspective, but racial diversity was there when I moved to the East Coast. There was less of a racial and gender diversity when I was living in, in, the, uh, in the South. But when I moved here, then things were a little different. Things were more fast coming, fast going. Uh, you had to just keep up with the change. The technology stack was even harder. So, you know, there's just day and night, but every opportunity to me, I, I look at the plus points and I always look at people that I can idealize and kind of replicate some of those qualities in me. Yeah, that's awesome. You said a lot of cool things in there um, from your first boss being uh, okay to reach across like a cultural boundary and give you uh, responsibility and help you to like imagine and to dream from a very early 
uh, point in your career all the way to um, changing kind of geography. And with that change in geography comes a change in culture. Like I totally felt that going from the Midwest to <laughs> the West Coast and being like put in charge of uh, startup companies who are at the bleeding edge of technology and uh, high tech versus you know, banks and financial institutions in downtown Chicago, just like the way people think. Yeah. And those two scenarios are very, very different. So um, yeah, I, I appreciate you sharing uh, the deltas, but I think getting comfortable, uh, being uncomfortable, uncomfortable. Yeah. and having enough courage to kind of put yourself out there and to learn and be curious, like that's the leadership principle I love. Uh, a whole lot on the Amazon side. I, I do these types of talks just to learn a lot about the other people that I interact with on a day-to-day -day basis in hopes that that knowledge will um, deconstruct the bias that lives kind of in the oxygen of our society. We could take that, give that to our children in the next generation so that what they're seeing maybe on mainstream media they have a personal experience that's different so that they they can say, no, I'm not gonna treat that person different or yeah. no, that's not consistent with what I've experienced about that group. And that's going to dictate my behavior and dictate the way that I um, move about this world. And hopefully they'll be able to do that a lot better than what we currently <laughs> are doing <laughs> today. So uh, yeah, I'm hoping yeah, that I'm, your three I'm, and my three will be able to do <laughs> <laughs> yeah, see, for, see what I encourage my my kids and also the people that I mentor is get involved with the community, mm -hmm. right? Community is a, a, is is like a big supporter for me. Even in Lynchburg, when I was living in a small town, I got engaged with the church. You know, we used to do services to the church. I used to go and do volunteer work at the University of Lynchburg. Uh, there used to be uh, courses that they were opening up and they needed some extra assistance for teachers and for aides. We used to go do that. So, you know, those connections that comes out of the community and serving the community, that taught me a lot. That, you know, corporate workforce, whatever you learn in the corporate workforce is one thing. And for people like me who immigrated, which doesn't have, and I was the first immigration, right? I don't have a second generation or third. So I don't have families that I can connect back to. So the people that I know are really the friends. The ecosystem of people are the communities and friends that I build. They are really my go-to families, right? And uh, because all my family is in India and you being here, you have to build that, the support system around you. Mm -hmm. And my support system was the communities that I got engaged and I continue to get engaged in the communities here. Yeah, that's another important point that I didn't fully appreciate until long after, like I left those initial engineering jobs, you know, the folks who um, immigrate into the country, um, I had no visibility to like the H-1B program or the visa <laughs> and the green card and the whole struggle. Um, so give me, give people who are gonna watch this maybe a sense of, okay, Brandon, you grew up on the South side of Chicago went to engineering school, you're like a US citizen. So it's easier for you to move about. But like, if you're coming from outside the country, give me some considerations that, you know, the average person might not even think about as they're working with people who uh, might be on their same team, but they just don't understand because there's nuance and then there's a whole backstory. And if you are not actively trying to know, maybe your teammate wouldn't just come out and give you kind of all of the details. So just spend a, a couple of minutes to talk about that for people that may not have any idea. Absolutely, Brendan. See, I mean, this is a land of dreamers, right? I mean, what to me is like, I've, I, I've, I've really loved this country for being that, right? It wasn't my option. Uh, it was a choice for me to live here and immigrate here and get my citizenship here, right? That's the choice that I made. Uh, because of the people, right? People like you, people like others who have been born here and who have the heart to welcome people who are dreamers, right? Who wants to contribute for this country, who wants to make this country better. Uh, they don't want to fence this, right? Hey, listen, you're not born here, go away. This is my place, this is my job. But, you know, they look at the strengths and people, they, st they look at the values that other people and other communities bring in and other, you know, you know, racial communities bring in and they said, you know what, 
you can contribute, you can make my country better. Come on, be a part of that, right? But as you said, it's a journey, right? You have to go through the legal systems. You have to make sure that you have good education, you apply for good jobs, you get your H-1B, and then you go through a process from H-1B through green card. You wait for eight to nine years, and then you get your citizenship, and then you know you become a citizen. Today, I'm a citizen. It took me 18, 19 years to get through that journey. But at the end of the day, I never felt like an alien in this country. To be very honest, I don't think I would have felt the same if I was working at anywhere else outside of United States. I never felt it. When I was working in Norfolk Southern or when I was working at Oracle or right now at Amazon, I felt like even though I didn't have the, the naturalization at that point, I always felt I belong here. I need to serve this place. This is a great place and I'm a dreamer. I'm contributing. I always had that sense of, you know, that, that feeling in me and the people around me made me feel that way. Right. And, uh, so again, the, the process is like, as, as I said, right, and you, either you come as a student and then from a student, you become a, a H-1B and then you go through the process of being in a H-1B for six to seven years. And then you get your green card, fortunately, and then you continue the green card journey for six, another six to seven years. And then you choose for naturalization and then you become a citizen, right? So it's a long journey, uh, but I think the most important thing is you know, the government right now is very open-minded as well. And I'm, we're, all, we're all blessed where we are right now in this point in time. So that also gives more opportunities to dreamers like me who wants to become an H1, who wants to become a green card or a citizen in the future. Yeah. yeah. I love it. Um, the diversity of our country and the diversity of the community and like the different kind of flavor that each person adds to it is a uh, part of what makes us really, really cool. So um, to that point about community that you mentioned, um, to juxtapose that against like being in this country and like going down a career path and like staying uh, on that lane of citizenship, how is it that you um, built a community or stayed in contact with like your original community, like in India, like your family connection, uh, did you travel there on a regular basis or was it lots of just late night phone calls? Uh, I know you probably missed them terribly in the first couple of years. So give us a couple of minutes yeah. on how you were able to cope uh, during those times. Yeah, I used to live a very frugal life <laughs> and I always saved up money to travel. Mm -hmm. And the reason for me to be frugal is because I wanted to travel every year. And sometimes every year is hard, uh, you know, when, you know, I had my child and I had my parents visit me at that time. So that year it was covered because they visited me. I didn't have to go. So, you know, on and off, but I made it a habit to visit them every year, one way or the other. Sometimes we went for a nice vacation in Europe and we all connected and met in Europe and we had a nice vacation there and we all just went our ways. So we made it a habit that family is important, wherever they are, family first, right? So we made it a point to meet every year and we continue to do that in some way. Of course, with COVID, uh, we are all separated for a much, much longer time. Um, and what we, all we can do is call them, Zoom them, be with them as much as needed. Um, yeah, I, that's really something that we're all missing a lot with the families, but you know what? There are so many people who have had bigger problems. Uh, mm -hmm. We are privileged in some way to have a job, to have a family, to have you know people that we can even call. Um, in fact, I saw a beautiful ad in LinkedIn the other day which said, if you're still getting a call from your mom and dad, that is a blessing in its own. Yep. Which means like, yes, I mean, in this situation, that is a blessing on its own. So I've started to appreciate every little thing that I have right now. Um, it, it does disappoint me that I'm not able to go and visit them, but I'm also hoping that, you know, this, this will pass and, uh, I know I can go visit them and be with them and, uh, spend some quality time with them again. Yeah. Yeah. I'm totally, uh, before my, I told myself, uh, at the beginning of this year, every day when I wake up before my feet touch the floor. I told myself that I should think of a couple of things that I'm grateful for, just because a lot of people uh, don't wake up. A lot of people um, don't have the full activity of their limbs. And 
uh, I've been really intentional and it's been helpful to like count my blessings um, whenever I feel like uh, I'm in a situation that I'd rather not be in. At least I'm employed. At least, yeah. you know, I have my health. You at know. least I have my insurance. <laughs> at least I have like, you know, I, well, even if I got it, I recover. You know, there's, there's so many things that we can just be appreciative about. Yeah. yeah. So um, I know people who are watching are like, we're, guys, you're going to talk about boards. You're going to talk about uh, some other <laughs> things in that area. So um, maybe I, I did some research and um, maybe you want to tell the people about the board that uh, you serve on NA3, a little bit about that organization, and then we'll have some just Q&A about how um, board service uh, even became something that was on your radar and something you wanted to do, and uh, I'll ask some Q&A there, but just, you know, I'll give you the mic, just introduce uh, the org that you're a part of, and then uh, I'll ask you a couple of, uh, a couple of questions about boards in general. Absolutely. So as I said, I mean, I'm a big into communities and serving communities. So I believed a lot in nonprofits and uh, what the nonprofits stood for. Right. So one of the things for me and I continue to do that is see as a South Asian woman, I've had my challenges. Right. In terms of connecting with everyone else and, you know, growing in my career, building that mentorship circle and belonging, feeling the sense of belonging wherever you are, right, in your in your company or in your community. So, you know, one of the biggest thing for me is to create that common platform for South Asian women uh, to have that mentoring ability. So for people to have peer-to-peer -peer sharing, uh, mm -hmm. mentoring, career prospecting, um, advancing in career, uh, speaking, uh, you know, ability to have, you know, executive level engagement. So those were the key tenants that we were looking for. And uh, Nature gave an amazing platform and I was able to serve in the events community, in, in the committee and uh, driving this common platform for South Asian women uh, and helping them advance their career. Uh, well, I took the same thing and I also brought it back to Amazon. So I'm president of the Amazon South Asian Affinity Group. And we have over uh, 300 South Asian women uh, who are actually subscribed and registered right now as a part of the affinity group. And one of the core tenants for us is, you know, progressing career, career advancement, having that peer to peer mentoring, uh, have, having the ability to connect with, you know, the, you know, the much bigger leadership circle, as well as leadership spotlights, right? Oftentimes, as I said, right, not everybody will have the time for the one to one mentoring. But it's also about, hey, who is my mentor that I idealize? How do I spotlight them? How do I bring out the stories and, and uh, lessons learned that, you know, others can just inherit, right? So having that leadership spotlight. So I do that right now with Amazon through my affinity group. It's a worldwide South Asian affinity group. Uh, even though I'm not part of Nathri actively right now, and I've moved on and I focused on building the South Asian affinity group within Amazon, for me, the biggest cause is what is the nonprofit that I strongly believe in? I believe in racial equality. I believe in gender equality. So I continue to invest and continue to be and participate and contribute to the boards that stand by those nonprofits. Yeah, that's awesome. And I, I, I love that we have such a diverse mix of nonprofits. If you were to go into yeah. kind of our Give Hub, there's yeah. so many different ones. Um, so whether you're big into K through 12, like education or STEM like me, or, you know, racial equity and equality, like there's something for everybody. So I, I would uh, encourage anybody who's watching this or listening to this. Um, the only way that either of us will fault you is if you do nothing, just, just do something. to just get do it something. Yeah. <laughs> There's always a place for everyone, right? Don't see, this is the thing. I mean, one of the amazing books that I really, really loved, uh, all-time favorite for me is The Rise by Patty yep. uh, is she, I mean, the way that she she brought her career, right? She's an ideal for me, right? How beautifully that from, you know, from being a, in an individual contributor all the way through, you know, an executive and HP and how she has taken her career, right? So it's about getting yourself better, do your job well, ability to connect with others, ability to build that mentorship circle and ability to believe in, in, in a community or be ability to have some kind of a belief in a bigger cause and work towards the bigger costs. Yeah, the one that I strongly believe is in gender and racial equality. So I continue to invest wherever I can um, as I progress. 
Yeah, that's I, I wasn't planning to uh, talk Patty Azzarello, but I'm also a big fan. And um, <laughs> one of her mentors actually is on a board that I serve on uh, called the Silicon Valley Education Foundation. And uh, we recently had um, folks go get Move by Patty and then Rise is the other book that she's out. Oh. Uh, she's got out. Um, but yeah, I, I listened to the Audible version and so many different diamonds and gems that she's uh, put into both of those works. So I highly recommend if uh, folks are looking to move their careers forward or lead their organizations in a more optimized way, check out either of, probably not even either, check out both of them. Check out both, yes, <laughs> that's one, <laughs> yes. So um, yeah, maybe we move over to uh, another question. Or maybe, well, let's do this, let's do a lightning round um, just to have a little bit of fun for the next couple of <laughs> minutes. Um, we talked a little bit about kind of the effects of the pandemic, but if we're fast forwarding to the very end of it, I'll ask you a question about like, what are some places maybe outside of going back home um, that are either on your bucket list and you've like never gotten to travel to or uh, places that you just love to go and you would just be right at the top of your list to go back to once things open back up. Oh, for sure. I want to go to Turkey. Um, you know, I have not been there, so I want to go there. Um, that's one of my favorites. And then I also want to go to West Banks. Uh, I want to go to Bethlehem. Of course, I want to go to Jerusalem and Bethlehem. I've never been there. I want to like take a take a uh, dip uh, in that <laughs> in that black Dead Sea. Yeah. So I definitely want to do that pretty soon, whenever it opens up. And uh, I, you know, I, I, every time when I make an India trip, I do a pit stop and we, you know, because we are going all the way across the world, why not make a pit stop, right? So yeah. uh, let's see if this pit stop can be Jerusalem for us. Got it, got it. Um, next quick hitter lightning round question is about food because I, I love to eat. You got a full house yeah. on your side. You, you guys probably love to eat as well. What are some either pandemic favorites, things that you've either enjoyed cooking or enjoyed eating uh, <laughs> the last 12 or 18 months, you and your family? Yeah, I'm going to say two foods and it's going to be funny. I like, I, we love binging on jambalaya. Ah, so yeah. that's my favorite. I can't cook a really good jambalaya because I don't have a proper dish to do that. Uh, but uh, the second one is my favorite, which I can really do well is the biryani. So the ah. biryani is... <laughs> It's a, it's a, a Mughalai based Indian food. So, you know, I can cook anytime. You can come over to my place and I can make the best biryani for you. Nice, nice. Um, I might take you up on that. So like, I'm going to remember. Of course. <laughs> about, um, we talked about books a little bit. So we mentioned the Patty books. Uh, any books or podcasts, or maybe you're watching a series or some documentaries that you think would be uh, super cool for, for folks to check out who are watching this? You know, see, uh, for me, the books is always comes up to the recommendations of my peers and Goodreads and the communities and the reading communities that I have, right? So again, like, you know, there's a lot of books that I can continue to recommend on, but I think The Rise is, is an amazing book for people to read. Um, and I also uh, love the book on about that, uh, uh, the radical candor, right? So it's that if you're a leader and if you're trying to challenge your team as well as be that good boss, right? I would go with the radical candor. That's another favorite book of mine. Um, in terms of, uh, you know, the, you know, I love Queen. I continue to watch it. I'm just waiting. I was a big fan of The Lost. Uh, and then, uh, of course, a lot of other stuff, the Game of Thrones and then the Queen. So I continue to just watch them. Sometimes it's not always about learning. It's not always about, hey, what do I have to learn? It's also about relaxation. It's yeah. also about fun. It's also about everything else, right? So you just have to sneak in here and there a few stuff that will just relax you and, uh, you know, keep going. Yeah, that's a really important point. I know that... Um... Folks that I meet, especially from kind of like immigrant kind of backgrounds, the, the focus usually is the parent telling their child, I want you to be an engineer or a doctor or a lawyer, or you'll be the fourth option, unfortunately, which is like a failure to our family. <laughs> <laughs> so you got to do one of those three. And then you like take that extreme work ethic into your career. And then you find yourself at a point where you can't even like relax or like enjoy 
um, and you got to be like, like on all the time. So I've been really intentional about trying to draw kind of the boundary and saying yeah. to myself, it's actually okay. You can just sit down on the couch and enjoy. And just binge watch. Yes. We are like that, Brendan. <laughs> it's like we take it easy as well. I mean, we have responsibilities and things like that. But just, and you know, sometimes it's also about personal time, right? It's just like, I just sit down on my couch many times and I just do nothing. All I do is just sit for myself. Yeah. 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 I think uh, we've been used to moving so fast that we haven't uh, made a habit of asking ourselves how we feel and yep. kind of just sitting there and um, kind of doing the self-care that's necessary in order to keep our, not just our physical, but like our mental state in a way that will be useful so that when we go to our teammates that we can actually offer them good coaching, good suggestions, like move stuff forward for our customers. So yeah, um, if you're watching this uh, from both Banaka and I, like make sure you're, you're taking care of yourself, put your own oxygen mask on first before <laughs> you try to do anything for, uh, for, for your team or for your family or for your community. Let's, uh, let's move over to maybe the last lightning round question that I'll ask is, uh, I know kids love music, What's your children's like favorite thing to to dance to or to jam to uh, at the moment? What are they like listening to? Oh my God, there is so much. Uh, my daughter picks up so many things that I can't even keep track of right now. Uh, it's uh, and she comes up with so many artists that I'm like, do they even exist? Where they're born? I'm like, I have no idea. So um, I think what what is the fox say is what my sons are really really interested in right now. So they are all bumped up and they are constantly jumping beats. Uh, but yeah, my in my house they're very much into pop and rock and uh, everything, anything and everything. But for me, I, I'm very classical. I love very mild, melodious kinds of music. So I date back to those calmness because music to me drives calmness. It's not so much about madness. So I'm a completely different spectrum uh, in, the, in, in the music. So I love listening to sitars and things like that. That just mellows down my mood. Yeah, I'm I'm same with you. I like uh, the calmer side of like my favorite genre of music is jazz. But you know how like jazz can get kind of crazy, mm -hmm. but then jazz can also be really, really calm. Really soothing, yes. Yeah, I like the calming and relaxing kind of jazz is my favorite. <laughs> <laughs> so let's um I see we got about 15 or so minutes. Um the, the next set of questions, we talked a little bit about the value of boards and like communities. Um, how have uh those helped you in your career to date? Like uh, you mentioned the value of sponsors and mentors. Um, you talked about opportunities to volunteer and to build relationships. How has that translated into um, you getting from point A to point B faster in your career or being able to move up the corporate ladder uh, yeah. as, you've, as you've moved through your, your career here? Yeah, I mean, see, the tenants are not really like, hey, listen, I need to join a board because I have to grow in my career. Probably that will never get you anywhere, right? So the tenants should be very clear. You have your purpose and you be very much focused on your purpose, right? And I, my purpose was, you know, I want to be in the tech. I, I, you know, I have my skills to be in the tech and I want to grow into leadership at some point in my career. But I made that leadership move. I knew connections, building the connections was very, very important uh, to, you know, to continue to grow in the leadership circle. So I, for me, it was more about, okay, for me to be visible and make sure that I'm building those connections, the communities and the activities that I did, for, that I believed in, right? I didn't want to go and be doing something artificial that I didn't believe in. I would never fit over there. I would have never built a genuine connection because these connections, they are the people that will go a long way. If you don't build those, you know, that relationship, I mean, come on, after that particular job gig or something, you're never going to look back to that person or you're never going to talk to that person, right? So you have to be genuine about those relationships that you're building. And that only happens if you are genuine by internally as yourself. So when I did lots of community work, when I did racial equality work, when I did work around gender equalities, the people that I met, they had the same, you know, wavelength as me. Uh, they had the same thinking as me, right? So together we were making an impact. 
Now, those people are also the people that I had my platform where I was able to express my opinions and my interests and my curiosities, right? Mm -hmm. They gave me the references that took me to the next one. They gave me to the references that took me to the other one, right? So the working backwards for all of us is find that cause mm -hmm. and then build your relationship around that cause. Then you will have genuine relationship and long lasting relationships. Uh, and I do the same thing when I move to Amazon, right? Amazon's of many affinity groups, right? As you basically said, there's so many causes. The cause that I believed in is continuously to be the DNI cause and to give that, uh, you know, gender equality cause. So that's why when I created the South Asian Community Affinity Group, I built the people and I brought, when I brought all the people in and the leaders and the executive sponsors and everything, they believed in exactly what I believed in. So it was so easy for me to connect with them and to be able to be that go-to person for them, right? Um, so that's, that is my biggest advice for people who wants to get into the boards. And the next thing is doing a good job is one thing, also being able to promote yourself, creating a brand for yourself and earn trust. The trust that you build around yourself should have the genuinity when you kind of build a brand around you. So, you know, I would really focus on personal brand. And if you don't know how to do a personal brand, I would reach out to, there's a lot of, uh, you know, franchises that, that's out there that can help you build a personal brand, right? And I would take additional external help, even if it's paid for that matter. Investing in your career is, it takes a little bit of cost and expense, which is fine. You have to go and build that personal brand and getting out there and expressing who you are and what you believe in. And that leads into opportunities in the future. Yeah, that's, you said a lot of uh, noteworthy things in there. I think authenticity, um, folks who- Earn trust, yeah. Yeah, folks who come from outside of the mainstream sometimes struggle with um, feeling like they have to be a different version of themselves in order to fit in. So you might say, oh, I like this because I see the big boss likes this. Or, oh, I want to say this because my other colleague who's a part of the mainstream says it like this. So I think uh, it's very important that point you said about being genuine and being authentic and in it being okay to be yourself and to embrace your culture and your values and like what you actually like and want to move forward towards. So I'm hoping that, you know, as you're watching this, as you're viewing this, please um, don't put yourself away and bring only a shell of you to what you're going to do for your work or what you're going to do for your, your family or your community. So um, yeah, thank you for sharing that piece of it. And then uh, the second piece about kind of the personal branding and like you, you'll you get out of it what you put into it. And if you realize that you don't have all the tools in order to make yourself the most effective, there's nothing wrong with investing, investing. Um, the dollars, the time. You know, I've had plenty of people who have uh, done the Toastmasters, who have mm -hmm. done like a bunch of different things in order to just improve uh, their look, their communication effectiveness, and a bunch of other things like that. And as a result, you know, they're now more valuable uh, team members, more valuable leaders, more valuable um, inside the company and outside. So it's, it's funny how those things pay dividends in your community life, in your like family life, and in your work life. So you're almost yeah. getting like a, a two for one or three for one kind of bargain when you do it that way. So um, yeah, the last thing, I see just a few more minutes. Um, any like uh, thoughts about how people who are early in their careers, but who are like locked down and in the pandemic times, maybe they wanna be kind of future uh, Manaka, future brand, like how, how would you give them a couple of things to work on in this weird kind of situation that we find ourselves in right now? They might say, hey, you know, I want to do personal brand stuff, but doesn't that take in-person connection with somebody or I just don't know how. Give yeah. me uh, just a couple of things to close on where people can like take these uh, actionable tips to um, get themselves ready for board service, get themselves ready for kind of making that next step in their in their lives and careers. Yeah. So the first thing that I would say is practice patience. Right. There is nothing called overnight fame and there is nothing called overnight success. Right. Build yourself to that. So I the first thing that I see in a lot of younger generation is instant rewards. Right. Sometimes instant reward doesn't really happen. So, I mean, even, even if it la it doesn't last, 
let's say you get lucky and then something happens, but that that really doesn't last. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, pa practice patience. Again, as I basically said, you know, you are in a digital world. There's nothing called physical. Everything is virtual right now. Even if I have a neighbor, I'm not going to walk down to that person and say happy birthday. All I'm going to do is do a Facebook message or a text. Hey, happy birthday, right? So we just, I mean, it was going to get so crazy that you could just be in your bedroom and wish somebody downstairs, right? It, 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 so it, it's just going to be normal. So, you know, you have this digital platform to build your brand. And to me, it's like, you know, there are, you know, when, things go in chaos or when there is a cause and when we have this uh, you know black life matter movement and when we have these you know the crisis in india or the crisis elsewhere you have a platform to you know say what you want about you know of course say the nice things right and you're able to take it forward in linkedin or facebook or in twitter post your opinions and make sure that you're not creating negativity right this is a time for you to be bringing out good qualities in you. So you can build a brand on your own if you want to. And pandemic is not a reason for that, right? And to be able to do that, of course, you need to have learnings, right? You need to, you need to first listen into multiple tech talks. You need to be preparing yourself for that if you want to build your personal brand around it and believe in your costs and work backwards from that cost. Always keep the costs in, in the mind. And whatever you do is working towards those costs. So I feel in this in this era, we are all privileged in some way to have this broader platform and the outreach. I mean, this recording can reach out to somebody living in the other part of the world. We all have that ability and power to do that. We don't have to be celebrities. We don't have to have a camera in hand. We don't have big production uh, pictures that's sitting out there, right? We all can be that if we wish to be. And again, use it for the good reasons, right? Don't build, you know, negativity. Don't cause chaos. Don't cause animosity. Use it for good reasons. Yeah, I love that. And um, I know if I think back to my younger self, you know, 15, 16 years ago, um, I was very ambitious in trying to do two, three, four things at the same time, yep. but not necessarily pausing to understand like what the fruit of that thing was. I would just go, 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 go. So I would also uh, encourage if you're younger in your career. And one of the things that I like about Amazon's culture is that we uh, take the time to write and be thoughtful and to yes. uh, really communicate well. And, and feedback. Yes. And feedback. Gonna, yes. Yeah, feedback. <laughs> well, um, yeah. <laughs> so that uh, one of the things that I, I take and I write down and I say to myself all the time is, is no such thing as a loss if you got a lesson out of it. So like no losses, only lessons. So all those times that you, you know, bump your head, that you do something that didn't work out, as long as you've got like a good story um, that comes out of it or a learning or something that can be useful for yourself, your family, your team, your community, then I think it was worth you going through that hard time, that tension, that struggle in order to get to that conclusion and to be able to take that back to other folks who could benefit from it. So that's another thing that I would just throw out there for you know, the earlier version of myself or yourself that might uh, you know, come across this talk. Um, but yeah, just uh, I wanna take this time to just give you your flowers and say thank you for making yourself available and for doing um, you know, the Q and A with me today. Hopefully the folks that are going to watch this. Uh, we'll learn a whole lot. Uh, we'll get some book recommendations. We'll um, empathize with two working parents <laughs> who are trying their best. <laughs> There's lots of fun, the fun aspect to that. So, you know, we, I would never change anything. <laughs> it's so much fun. Yeah. Actually, maybe the last question I can, uh, we could end on is like, LOL, kind of laugh out loud. Three kids in your house, three kids in mine. Let's trade stories. Like what's the last thing that one of your kids did or happened in your family that like literally made you laugh out loud? Oh my God, there's so much. I, why don't you go first? That gives me some time to think. <laughs> sure thing, sure thing. Yeah. So I have uh, three children, nine years old, uh, five years old and two years old. So girl, boy, boy. Yeah. And yesterday um, they like glitter and like just sprinkles and like all this color for some reason. Um, so I went to the park and uh, my middle guy had kind of a box of glitter and 
the two-year-old was playing in the sand and the daughter was like swinging on a swing or something. And for to your point about kids like being super digital, like when I take them to the park, sometimes they don't even know what to do them do with themselves because they're like no screen. So they literally like go crazy in a park. So I look up and I've got my daughter swinging on a swing like normal. But then I got my son, the five-year-old, pouring this green glitter in his hair. And then I've got the two-year-old eating sand out of the sandbox. So I like, I'm like, there are problems with both of what these kids are doing, but I think it's more dangerous what the two-year-old is doing. So I'm like getting sand out of his mouth. But by the time I got to my five-year-old, uh, I don't know if you follow basketball, but he looked like Dennis Rodman. On the, <laughs> he had this crazy green hair. I tried to wash it out in bath time last night, and his, he's still walking around today with a head that looks like uh, there's like, it's just gleaming green right now. So it'll probably take us a couple of washes, but uh, I had to just laugh to myself as I was trying to get all that glitter out of his hair yesterday. Kids will be kids. And yes. uh, <laughs> you know, you reminded me of a good story. I have this big OCD uh, issues in me. So I keep my stuff pretty organized, very clean home. Yeah. So my kids know my temper when they make a mess and everything. Mm -hmm. And they try to cover up for each other and they try to support each other. So uh, just a week ago, um, I just saw uh, a mat in my kitchen in, in an awkward place. And I just didn't realize what it was. And um, I just walked away with it, right? My son comes back from school. Both the twins comes back from school. And uh, one person just comes in there to make a confession. Uh, and then the other person says, no, 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 it's OK. It's OK. You don't have to do it. Because he's protecting and defending the other person to make sure that he doesn't get scoldings or like. So the the the, the actual thing is they had taken the paint from the garage. And it, fortunately, it is. Uh, uh, it is a washable paint and they had apparently used it to mix it in a glass which I drink tea or coffee with and they tried to use that watercolor to do something and apparently it had leaked and fallen in the ground yeah. and they'd used my kitchen mat to you know cover it they wiped it they've used the kitchen mat they you know in an awkward position and then they didn't say anything to me in fact in the morning my husband was like you know what the boys were so curious to go to school and they were like, let's go to school. We had the time, but they were like, let's go to school, let's go to school. And when we come back in the evening, it apparently looks like these guys have done some mischievous stuff and they have really covered it up. And one guy is really trying to confess it and the other guy is holding him back. Shh, don't tell mommy, don't tell mommy. It's okay, it's okay. But then eventually we figured it out and we called and said it's okay to do mistakes but make sure you can confess it right yeah. so <laughs> it was so funny how one was protecting the other yeah they're like the same ages the same yeah trying to hold the other one back that's that's yeah. so cool yeah. well um i know we reached the bottom of the hour um again thank you so much for uh this hour conversation and i know it's gonna be useful for so many people who watch it and listen to it so uh, from our family to yours, uh, have a great rest of your week and weekend, and uh, we will catch up very, very, very soon. Thank you, Brendan. Stay safe. All right. Thank see you. you. Okay. Bye.